हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द क्लोज क्वाइल हेलिकल स्प्रिंग वट इज ए स्प्रिंग स्प्रिंग इज एन इलास्टिक एलिमेंट विच एब्जॉर्ब एनर्जी वेन ए फोर्स इज अप्लाइड ऑन द स्प्रिंग एंड विच रिलीज इज एनर्जी वेन द फोर्स इज रिमूव सो वेन द फोर्स इज अप्लाइड स्प्रिंग एब्जॉर्ब एनर्जी वेन द फोर्स इज रिमूव स्प्रिंग रिलीज इज एनर्जी This is a spring. So basically, there are two types of springs: helical and leaf spring. Leaf springs are used in heavy-duty work like trucks. So this is the beyond of scope of this chapter. We will be considering only the helical spring in this chapter. So helical spring, what is helical spring, and how they are made? Helical springs are made by bending the wires in the form of a helix and keeping the diameter of the wire constant. So what is helical spring, which made by the bending the wires in term, in the form of helix you can see here these are two types of helical springs and what is the application of these springs and what they do they store the energy similarly as we discussed earlier that they store the energy when the force is applied they release the energy when the force is removed right and they are used in absorbing shocks like in scooter bikes you can see here helical springs are there which absorbs the shock and also they reduces the vibrations uh, helical springs are basically of two types closed coil and open coil helical spring what is closed coil in closed coil helical spring there is a small gap between the coils you can see here the gap is very small because of this gap they cannot take compressive load they can take tensile load so elongation the the coils which can take the springs which can take the elongation or tensile load are called closed coil helical springs in open coil you can see here there is a large gap between the coils so because of this large gap they can take the compressive load so they are also called compression springs right so they are meant for compressive load also as well as they can take small uh, axial load also uh, elongation or tensile load also but mainly they are meant for compressive load so the springs which are which have is a large gap between the coils and they offer the significant amount of compression as called open coil helical spring so let us discuss the main difference between the closed coil and open coil helical spring one of the difference is the helix angle you can see here there is small gap so helix angle is small so in closed coil helical spring the helix angle is less than 10 degree while in open coil the helix angle is larger than 10 degree another is Uh, we have already discussed that there is no gap or very small gap between the coils and there is large gap in open coil helical springs because of low helix angle and low gap the closed coil helical springs have small pitch while the open coil has a large pitch right and due to the same reason of small gap and uh, no axial deformation in compressive when the torque is applied when, when torsion is applied the axial deformation in is small in closed coil helical spring while in open coil there is a large axial deformation due to the application of uh, torque and because of this the small gap and the small helix angle the total length of the spring is very small you can see here the total length of the spring is small while for open open coil the total length is very large so these are the main differences between the closed coil and open coil helical springs in the coming topics we will discuss the mathematical aspects of closed coil helical springs as we have already read that the closed coil helical spring is that spring in which the spacing between alternate coils is very small right that's why it is a extension spring or tension spring and in open coil helical spring the spacing is very large so that it can be used for a compression spring so in closed coil helical spring it is very important for us because most of the questions came from this topic only right open coil helical spring or leaf spring is not important because they are not in our syllabus but closed coil helical spring is very important most of the question came from this topic right so there are some terms used in closed coil helical spring what are the terms used right this is the r r what is that r this is the mean radius of the spring r is the mean radius of spring 
there is a term d d you can see here small d small d this is our diameter of that wire for which uh, this uh, spring is made right so diameter of the wire diameter of wire right this is w w which is load applied this is load or weight applied there is another term used in this uh, helical spring that is uh, n that is number of turns of the coil number of turns how many number of turns are there how many number of turns are there number of turns of spring coil right now you can see here this is a closed coil helical spring the coils are very uh, spacing is very small I, I have shown here a large spacing to for that clarity of the picture but actually there is negligible spacing between the coils right so total length of the coil will be well what will be the length then length of the coil that will be equal to 2 pi r n right 2 pi r 2 pi r is the uh, circumference multiplied by the length uh, number of turns right so that will become the length of that uh, coil spring coil so l is equal to 2 pi r n so what is uh, 2 pi r n this is the uh, length basically length of the spring so this is basically the length of spring length of spring and there is another term used in this closed coil helical spring that is delta that is what is delta when we apply an external load w there is extension extension in the coil extension in the spring so in delta is the extension or elongation extension or elongation of the spring in spring rest is the g that is modulus of rigidity modulus of rigidity right why we are studying this chapter this topic in the chapter of torsion because when we are applying a load actually a torque is acting torque is acting on the spring you can see here a torque is acting on the spring due to the spring material goes into tension and at the external dia external of the spring the shear stress will be maximum so if i draw the shear stress diagram for this for this spring wire which is a, of dia d you can see here i am making somewhat larger but actually this dia is very small but i am making uh, larger due to clarity for clarity purpose this is the dia of the spring wire you can see here this is the diameter of the spring wire this 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 dia i am making here this you can see here this is the diameter of the spring wire and when the load is applied a torque is acting on the spring wire and the shearing stress will be developed so you can see here there will be shear stress developed in the spring wire you can see like this like this you can see this this is the spring uh, shear stress developed in the string, spring wire and it will be maximum it will be maximum when the dia is d outer dia outer dia of the spring wire so this is the d this dia i have made here right so suppose i am naming it a suppose this is the part a of the spring so this a part i have made here now right this is the a part of this spring right so the maximum stress will be developed at the outer periphery of the wire right and at the center of the wire there is no stress developed and outer periphery shear stress is developed because whenever we apply a torque the shear stress is developed in the material right so you know already that whenever a when weight is given a torque develops in the material like this and this torque is causing the twist or angle of twist in the material and due to which the shear stress shear stress is developed in the spring wire right and we have to find out what is the maximum shear stress developed because that is the part of failure at which the material can fail 
so we have to find out the maximum shear stress developed in the material so what is the maximum shear stress developed in the material so what is the torque what is torque torque you know torque is a force multiplied by the distance force multiplied by distance so force is a weight acting at a distance r right so this part is at a distance r so weight so torque is the force multiplied by the distance t is equal to w r and we know the the torsion equation what is torsion equation you know t by j equal to tau by r and this will be tau max because it is acting at the outer radius tau by r equal to g theta upon l so from here we can find out the tau tau max tau max of this material so i am writing here now so tau max will be equal to maximum shear stress in the material of the wire uh, spring wire will be equal to tr by g tr by g tr by g this is r basically this r is basically wr this r is basically because shear stress is developing at the at the periphery from inner radius to outer radius because r this r we have already used as a mean dia mean dia so we will be using the radius of the spring wire here this is the radius of the spring wire right so this is uh, the radius of the spring wire right so these two r are different this r is the mean radius mean radius of the spring because the torque is acting at this point by wr right and this r is different this is the mean radius of the wire where the shear stress is acting right small r and capital r two r are there right so this r is basically t by 2 or 2 r here i can write it here 2 r two times the radius of the wire two times the radius of the wire is basically the diameter of the wire right so this r is the radius of the wire right i am writing here this r is the radius of wire radius of spring wire because shear stress will be acting at the uh, radius of the spring wire and it will be maximum at the maximum radius right is it okay and this r is the mean uh, radius of the spring total spring right so tr by g so uh, t we know what is t that is w multiplied by the mean radius r small r in terms of diameter we can write d by 2 divided by j j is the polar modulus of inertia polar moment of inertia and that is given by pi by 32 d to the power 4 isn't it so by this we can find out what will be the maximum shear stress developed in the spring wire which is very important for the failure of the spring right we should know where the spring can fail right so what is then tau max so tau max will be given by 16 wr by pi d cube so tau max will be equal to 16 wr by pi d cube so this is the formula for maximum shear stress in a closed coil helical spring which you should remember for numerical purpose right so this was the shear stress developed in closed coil helical spring